you know, like myself, who uh, out, out of choice or out of necessity have kind of had to be out there and be strong and self-sufficient yeah. and independent for so long, it can almost become like a badge of honor. Like, it's almost like, you know, the, the client you described who had that very extreme situation of having her husband murdered and having to support the kids. I mean, a certain amount of that was absolutely necessary for her to get through it. But yeah. for women out there that, you know, out of choice or out of necessity have kind of had to operate in the world that way that for way. a long time. And a lot of times we're not even really aware of it. I know I wasn't as a single woman. Yeah. I always felt like I was very feminine in appearance in a lot of ways. But I mean, I was taking charge and taking names because I had to, to kind of get through life and support myself and make things work at that time. Yeah. And so how do we, if, if we're in that category and I've been there myself, how do we, how do, how do we like, first of all, adapt or adjust or just kind of, you know, open up a little bit more to making it feel more safe for a man? Yeah, I think one of the first things you can do is is when you're not at work or when you don't have to be in those types of environments where you have to compartmentalise, you've got to allow yourself to feel. And maybe you're doing that already, but I, I very clearly remember a conversation with one of my relationship coaches where he said, you know, if you're feeling bad for a day, yeah, sometimes you do need to speak with your clients and sometimes you've got to perform for them, right? Harden up and get through it. But at the end of the day, you've then got to come back and feel what you need to feel. And if you don't, over time, that's going to add up and that's going to lead to almost like a closed cupboard being full of dirty clothes. You just keep throwing the clothes in there and pushing the door shut. At some point, you have more and more anxiety that the cupboard's going to burst open. So you've got to keep feeling what you need to feel at the end of the day, basically. And so taking that into your dates there's a real piece around, I think a lot of women who have been in those situations, as you say, you might find that it's kind of like a badge of honor. It's mm -hmm. like, I can be tough, I'm unbreakable, I'm strong. And I think one adjustment that I really encourage my clients to make, it really everyone to make, but those clients in particular, is to start taking more badges of honor from, from imperfections and from things, it's like things they might've perceived as weak so I deserve to receive love because I cry sometimes. I'm a great person because sometimes I make mistakes. Um, I'm amazing and valuable because I have an autoimmune condition. Like really integrating their self, their healthy self-image into their not strength, into their humanness, their mistakes, their negative emotions, all, all the things that they probably have got used to either judging about themselves or dismissing they're probably in a world of men, which is like their boardroom, you know, don't be weak. That's a weak emotion. It's like in dating, you've got to shift that aside and understand that your humanness and your value comes from the roughness around the edges. Your ability to connect comes from your weakness. It comes from your negative and vulnerable emotions. Integrating those parts into your self-worth and really valuing, it has to start with you valuing yourself for them first. And the more you do that, the more you start showing up on dates and guys will either love it or not like it. But more and more as you keep doing it, you're filtering guys that, that love the rough around the edges, that appreciate the vulnerable shares and the weakness. When you step out of work, integrating those imperfect parts or those parts that you see as bad as actually part of your healthy self-worth, that's really the core work that I do with clients on that. Mm. No, no more performer, no more strength. It's like... You're, you are lovable and you are most lovable because you are imperfect and sometimes broken and make mistakes and sad. And, and that's actually what makes you the most lovable. It's so true, Mark. And that's so profound because when we're real, when we allow someone to really see who we are without feeling like we have to put out this perfect persona that everything is perfect all the time and that we're perfect, it makes us relatable Right. It makes it safe for a man to share what's really going on with him. And it, it opens up that whole possible possibility of intimacy. Because like you said, that's what a relationship is, is a, a, a deep relationship is when I'm more intimate with you than I am with other people. You and get to see these, this spectrum of who I am. 
yeah, in, into me see. Have you heard that before? Mm-hmm. Yeah. This idea, ladies, that intimacy is into me see, as in you see into me more than the rest of the world. So if you really want to build intimacy, bringing that out, bringing the imperfections and the, the whatever you might have perceived as weak or bad, that emotional side, bringing it out mm. on your dates. And, and I know a few of you might have questions like, well, hang on a minute, I don't want to be in a, an emotional mess when I show up on right, dates. Right, we're, right. we're not saying take it to like a level 10, right? We're just saying the test being a, a number or two ahead of the guy. So if he's showing up at a three, show up at a four or five yourself. You know, if he starts showing up at a five, you guys can go deep. You can show up at a six, but that's, that's the realm. He leads the physical safety. You, if, if you guys are going out, you, he keeps you safe. If he, if you're going to sleep with him, he wants, you want the bedroom to be safe. You tend to lead the emotional safety. So that's kind of your role with the vulnerability. Yeah. And you know, one thing I like to think about when it comes to vulnerability too, and you're bringing up such an important point, Mark, is that we're not saying go out on the first date and spill all of your beans on and all of your emotional stuff. Uh, But I think uh, vulnerability includes not only kind of those tender parts of ourselves or the things that we might consider to be weaknesses or fears, but it also, in my understanding also includes sharing a little bit about our hopes or our dreams or things that light us up or that we're passionate about or that we're excited about exactly you know and so that part of vulnerability can actually be you know we often think of it as kind of the heavy stuff but it can also be a lot of fun that's a great point yeah we forget that if you want to call it positive vulnerability is absolutely a thing sharing your passion, sharing your energy, telling more stories um, rather than, say, asking questions all the time. If you're the type that always is most comfortable asking questions, tell more stories. That's a form of vulnerability. Tell good stories. Tell stories about what's important to you. Even over text, I get my clients to start doing this. Make more statements than questions. You know, the more that you're sharing, the more you're already being vulnerable. Happy or sad is, is not a thing, right? But from either can be vulnerable. But from the first day, yeah, you don't go level 10 sad. That's just socially unintelligent. But you can definitely go to like level seven passion and maybe like level three sad and just test it out and share and go from there, you know, see if he matches you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I just really, I really love this conversation. I'm really so glad that you're talking about this, Mark, because it's not a topic that I think a lot of people talk about and that is on the radar Uh, for a lot of people out there. And I think this emotional safety piece, I mean, my husband and I, as I said, have talked about it a lot. I think it's really, really important to understand and could be a real key to having a successful relationship. So I'm so grateful that you're bringing it up and talking about it in this event. My pleasure, Michelle. Yeah, it's a topic I'm very passionate about myself. And Mark, I just want to give you a chance if there's anything you want to say, just kind of as a, you know, word of encouragement or inspiration or last word before we wrap up today. Yeah, I would just say that that don't compare your journey to the next woman's. Your journey is unique to you and you can't compare to your friend who's been in a relationship for 25 years or your other friend who seems to get that guy or your sister who hasn't had this problem. You just... If there's one thing that working with a variety of, a huge variety of clients one-on-one has taught me, it's that even identical twin sisters can have such different stories that it is literally comparing apples and oranges. So your story is yours. We're here today. Yep, sure, maybe we'd change the past if we could, but we're here today. We've reached this point. Now you've got the awareness. So from now on, you're, you're an adult. You have the ability to, to write whatever you want from this point forward. So don't compare accept yourself where you're at and then you only live once. So make the changes for what you deep down want. Mm, Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. That's such an important reminder, Mark. We're all on our own, our own journey, our own path. So yeah, beautiful thought. So uh, Mark, again, I just am so grateful that you covered this topic so beautifully and it's so important and I'm so grateful and uh, really appreciate your expertise and contribution as always. My pleasure, Michelle. Thank you for having me. It's always so much fun coming on with you. We have such great chats. So yeah, it was great to be here.
Yeah, thank you. And for all of you who are watching, uh, thank you also for being here. Bye for now.